test this alarm's operation after each storage period, before each trip, and at least once per week during use. And then down here is where your test button is and it says test weekly. All right, come on. How many of you people are actually testing this thing weekly? How many of you even know what this thing is? Other than the thing that drains your battery when your RV is in storage. This is your carbon monoxide detector. And then in the fine print it says replace by 60 months after retail sale slash EST 60, I don't even know what that is, MOIS? But I mean 60 months. So what they're saying there is replace it after five years. This RV right here was made in 2018. It was sold in 2018, so it might have been made in 2017. Either way, this thing's got to go. Let's get it fixed. So the weather's been getting nice, and not too long ago we had all of the windows open in the RV, and we turned on the hot water heater to wash some dishes. And that thing went off and it made this weird sound that I'd never heard it before and I couldn't tell where it was coming from and it took me a while to figure out it was the carbon monoxide detector. And my best guess is is that with the hot water heater being right here right next to the door we were actually just sucking fumes right in and testing our carbon monoxide detector. And of course big problems like this only happen on travel days so we turned on the fans, turned off the hot water heater, turned off the gas, panicked for a lot longer than we probably should have and since the gas was shut off and there's no source of carbon monoxide anymore, we hit the road. When we got to the next campsite, we carefully reestablished the test parameters, opened up the windows, turned on the hot water heater, and it didn't go off. So that tells me that this thing is probably faulty. I mean, combined with the fact that it's over five years old. So did you not know that these things need to be replaced? I didn't. I mean, it kind of makes sense, but I grew up never having to replace my smoke detectors, which probably also need to be replaced. So we're going to get a new one installed here, and the first thing we got to do is turn off the power to this thing. And I just closed the curtain over there, which allows me to see that this little green light is on. I'm going to go back to the fuse panel and remove the fuse that powers this thing. So this is the central command center of your RV's electrical system, the WFCO panel. And we've got AC breakers on one side and DC fuses on the other. And let's see, we've got furnace, light, light, monitor, that's probably it, LP, I guess that's propane, but why does the propane need a 3 amp fuse? So it could also be that. ENT is either entertainment or entrance, light, light, 15 amp AC. Why does the AC have a 15 amp DC breaker? That probably means something else, because I have no idea what that scribble is. If you're going to write stuff in your panel, take an extra special second and figure out, you know, how to write neatly so that you're going to remember this in the future, because that means nothing to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of pliers. These are metal. They're uninsulated, so I might electrocute myself, but we're going to do this for science. Just be careful. Use something. Use your fingers if you want to. So the 15 amp monitor is right there. And then when you pull it out, the light comes on to let you know that's what fuse is that has blown. So if you do have a blown fuse, you'll know right away because there'll be a red light coming through your panel. Okay, it's not the 15 amp monitor. So we'll put this one back in and we'll go for the 3 amp LP. So I can get these out with my fingers, but I feel like I'm going to drop it. That's the 3 amp LP. And she's all dark. So the kit that I got is a propane gas and carbon monoxide detector. And it also came with this gas leak detector for a couple of dollars more. So why not? The gas leak detector comes with a set of AAA batteries and a nice little storage case. There we go. Oh, before I get yelled at by the YouTube police, got to remove all screen protectors. Okay, batteries go in with the positive side towards the detector. Put the screw cap back on. And I would assume that both of these have a date, but maybe this one, because it's not electrified all the time, doesn't have that same kind of date. However, if you do leave the batteries in this, this is a soft power switch, not a physical mechanical switch. So the batteries are gonna drain. And from the factory, the batteries are already pretty dead. Awesome. And then on the side, it says, please refrain from use until after 20 seconds Warm up process. So give it a good 20 second count before you try to do anything with it. Nothing there. And then my hot water heater is that white box buried underneath of the kitchen sink. So we'll take our meter and we'll probe around in here. Trying to find where the gas lines are, which are gonna be buried out of camera view. And it should, it should beep and no beeps. Batteries are out of it and I put it back in the box. Could you imagine if you put this thing like 
back in the box with the batteries in it, shoved it under the bed, and then as you're driving down the road, you hit a bump and it turns the on button on, and then the thing overheats inside of the case and starts beeping under your bed, and you can't figure it out until you're trying to sleep and it's just beeping all night long. It's like some creepy movie. So take the batteries out. Inside of our detector box, do we need anything else? We've got a little cushion to install. We've got a vanity plate. We've got some screws. We've got some instructions. This here is the detector itself, another contractual obligation. Hang on. All right, that's done. Won't get in trouble now. So if your original detector looks like this, just plug it into the same spot. If your original detector is only yay big, use that as your cover plate for vanity. If it's recessed inside of a cabinet somewhere, you can use the thin one. And if it's gonna sit on top of the cabinet, you can use the thick one. So this thing has everything you need. And one additional thing that I like is that it has these uh, lever nut style connectors. This is gonna be a really, really easy install. You lift these up, you put your positive and negative wire in, close them down, make sure they're tight and they're not coming out, and you're good to go. RV manufacturers do love to use the square drive Phillips head combo screws. So we're gonna get in there and get that fixed. And mine looks like it is a surface attach. So I'm gonna take my screwdriver and get this off. And these screws here are just regular old wood screws and they're just going into a little tiny thin panel. So when you're screwing them back in, don't kill them. Just put them in until they're snug and you're done. And then I've got just this little hole here to cover up. So the regular panel is gonna leave some screw holes out, but the bigger panel will take care of it. And they just ran some regular, this looks like 12 gauge wire up front. So we'll cut that off and strip it back. We've already verified that the power is out, so I can just get right to cutting here. And you can't add wire back easily. So I'm gonna cut it off one at a time. That's the red side. So now I can strip this back. Give that a little twist, and then we'll verify red to red. And she's in there nice and snug. And then we'll cut off the black side. Get rid of that. Okay, that one's in there nice and snug. And that one's in there nice and snug. And we're not going anywhere. These are Kiwi's wire strippers. So I've got the automatic wire stripper function here on the front, and I've got crimpers down here on the back side for insulated crimps and non-insulated crimps, and then a little wire cutters. This is a pretty good multi-tool. All right, so we're gonna use the big one here. So I need to find out which way is up and then screw the detector into the panel. And they gave me two different size screws. They gave me the big ones, which look like they're gonna secure the panel to the panel. Vocabulary is wonderful. Or these little tiny ones. And I'm gonna say these little tiny ones are for securing the detector into the panel that we then secure to the panel. So double check that it's right side up and we'll get it screwed in place. This is just a metal screw into plastic, just snug is good enough. And since nothing in an RV is level, I'm gonna make it line up with this sticker bottom and with this side over here. So what I do is I screw in one side and then I will line it up and screw in the other side with a little more attention to detail. All right, all set, just gotta go turn it on. And again, replace 60 months after initial power on. E equals end of life, it doesn't say E, it's nice that it says that. Alarm will not operate without power, green light must be on, the green light is on. And then that's what she looks like in normal operation. It's a fairly straightforward job. I would say that just about any handy person could get this job done, but if it's something that you're not comfortable with, definitely call in a mobile RV repair tech or a licensed electrician or someone along those lines to help you out. This is how I did it and worked out for me. The instruction manual does say that when you first turn it on, it's gonna give you those two beeps that you heard, and then you have to wait three minutes for the sensor to heat up. Then it will show you that positive reading that everything is A-OK. -okay. There are links in the description down below where you can get this RV propane and carbon monoxide detector and make sure that your family is safe. There's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. I'll see you over there.